to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. James. <laughs> yeah. Back. Back. I'm back from Orlando, Florida. Okay. Oof. Are you though? Are you it, really back? Yeah. Yeah. I feel I'm like back. your heart I th- I feel like you left your heart there. In in Orlando? Mm-hmm. No. I, I feel like oh you just I definitely did not. The sights, the smells, Boy. the people. There is certain cities you go to. Sure, now tread lightly. I am. Um, There's certain (laughs) cities you go to where you're amped if you never have to go back again. Sure. And not that the people of Orlando weren't lovely because they were. Um, They looked lovely. Yeah, it it was fine. It's the infrastructure of that city. Sure. The traffic there is mind-altering. Mind-altering everywhere you go, and you're like, man. You could see why there's so much murder. Right? Yes. You can see why there's so because much mayhem. Because it's really fucking hot, and mm-hmm. you're in a lot of traffic sure. most of your day. And it, I, I felt like it was a lot like L.A. in the sense of if anything was 10 miles away, you were like, yeah, I'll be there in 40 minutes. Okay. And I feel like we were late for everything. Yep. Um, and, again, the humidity is really something else. If you're not going down there to go to Disney World. Sure. Not sure what else there is for you to do there. Well, what did you do? So we did a couple of live shows for Jane right. and Bros. There's um, that. We did one on a Friday night and the humid and we did it outside on, on uh, the guy's name is Jeff Simmonson. Huge dude. I honestly can't thank you enough for your hospitality. It was amazing. Gave up his house to throw a house party for drinking bros. That's a big ask. Absolutely. For, for drinking bros podcast. It's a, it's a huge ask. And yeah. There's a ton of people there. We set it up outside so that way we wouldn't be inside the house. First mistake. Yes. <laughs> he had a, a screened-in pool. Outside mm-hmm. Florida. And it was nice. Really, really nice, right? Right. But, um, but that humidity, even at, I don't know, 9 o'clock. I think we went, ended up going live at like 9 o'clock at night taping the, taping mm-hmm. the show. Was so intense. I lost maybe eight pounds worth of sweat throughout. Nice. And... You find like you find your mind going to weird places mm-hmm. uh, that maybe you've like, never been before. Yeah, because you're a flash of like eating a guy's face off or something, you know, yes. and you're just like, oh, oh, and if you had stayed there longer, yep. 100%. I think you would have had some kind of Florida man situation, right? Yeah. Um, just Alec, a couple of days more. Alec, one of our, uh, our producers on the show, he he almost died that that night. I felt real. He's sitting behind camera. I feel really bad for you. I'm so sorry about that. I want to apologize on air. There was a point where you looked like you were going to black out, and I get it. And I'm, I'm just sitting in a chair talk, interviewing people. I thought I was going to pass out. Um, I don't know how you made it throughout, but uh, his shirt drenched in sweat. Same with mine. Luckily, everybody else was, so nobody really just cared. Just standing in one place. Yes. Gosh, it sounds so fun. Yeah. So fun, and I'm sorry that I missed it. No, but it, w- it was a blast, but immediately after we stopped shooting, we moved the rest of the party inside where it was just like, obviously, hey, we've got to get back. Jamie, you, you probably would have died on the floor. Like, just absolutely. He doesn't love heat. Died, no. Jamie For does... someone that lives here, in Wilmington even. Yep. Uh, Jamie uh, does not like no. heat. Other producer, Jamie, you would have, I, I think you would have passed he out. He would have said, our equipment's not going to work unless we're in air conditioning. Yes. Yeah. Which exactly. is a lie that he tells us. <laughs> it's a lie he tells us all the time and we just go with it because we don't know. What do we know? So the, the, the party was great, but the night before was crazy. We get a call at, what was it? Did you ever get to the bottom of 945, that? 1045, that our flight is canceled. The next morning at four, your flight was at five. So you flight was got, supposed to be at 5 a.m. The there next must be day. some kind of law against that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I actually, I scratched that. Our flight was supposed to be at 7 a.m. originally. Mm. Then they called and canceled just the night before and just said, hey, 
it's just canceled. Um, and we're going to put you on a Saturday night flight that doesn't get until 11 p.m. at night, leaving on a Friday morning. Not only were we doing a live show Friday night, but we're doing a live show Saturday afternoon. No, and most then the of game. the time when you plan a trip, you've got stuff to do every day. Do you know what I mean? Very yeah. rarely do you, do you have a buffer day for your trip. I've never seen anything like it. So we're scrambling. It's 1045, you know, now 11 at night. You've got to and get you've on got the- four different people in four different places trying to all get the same flight together. Correct. You've all got canceled. Because it's me, Dan, Alec, and Nick, um, one, of my, one of my beef fries from the neighborhood. All of us have to reschedule. But the problem is you get a text that your flight is canceled. That's it. Yeah, it's not like somebody calling and being somebody, like, somebody hey, calls and says, hey, we're going to help you get on the next you? flight. Yeah. You get a text and then it just says, we've put you on a, no worries, we've put you on a flight two days later. And you're like, I'm sorry, what? No, there mm-hmm. is actually worries behind that. Um, so you have to call them back. Well, at this point, good luck trying to get a fucking agent on the phone at 1145 sure. at night. Mm-hmm. We didn't get confirmation that we had actually gotten on a, a plane until about 12.45 in the morning. And the closest airport was a, a, a tiny airport called Jacksonville. Jacksonville, mm-hmm. North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Don't be confused at home, folks. It was not Jacksonville, Florida. Yep. It was Jacksonville, North Carolina, which I didn't know was a city that existed in this world. Mm-hmm. So they said, hey, we can get you on this flight that's at you know, 4, 5.45 or whatever it is. And then you can make your same connector. And then make it there and blah, blah, blah. Lord. So then we've got to call everybody and say, hey, man, Alec, super sorry. Hope you're up. Because let's say, what if he wasn't up that late? Right. Because you have you a flight at. You need to meet at- me at my house at 4 a.m. Because we have a 45-minute drive to this thing. And good luck. Mm-hmm. You know? So at 4 a.m., we all gathered in my, <laughs> my driveway. Put all of our shit, our, all of our gear in there, and then drove to this tiny airport in Jacksonville, North Carolina, which is all back roads. Kind of like, you felt like you were driving a field of dreams. That's all Love I saw it. was like cornfields and mm-hmm. maybe tobacco fields. Or I, I, I don't know. It, it was dark and it was super early. Mm-hmm. Now we get there. This airport has two, two terminals only. Just two, two gates. Oh, sounds like a dream. Two gates, right? You're yeah. going to one place or another. Beautiful. It was, it was Charlotte or somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And it's so early in the morning that there was only five of us. So it's the four of us. Mm -hmm. And then there's a black cop that's in line with us Mm -hmm. who's behind us. And we go through TSA is also doubling as the agents at the gate. So once they run your bags through, then they check you in at the gate. And the other person was making sandwiches inside the breakfast bar. Once you get through. With like their TSA gear on. Correct. Okay. One terminal, two gates. That's all that was out of this airport. Uh, five people. Mm-hmm. All of us get our bags pulled from TSA and get searched. <laughs> so I looked at the, the... Well, it is... The whole thing is a little suspect. I, I, oh, I, I yeah. kind of look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys Dan, are all... Dan looks super military. So it's just like, all right, cool, man. I, I turn to the black guy behind me and I go, hey, man, at least it's not racial profiling. You know, mm-hmm. that's all of us that got pulled. And he how did he feel? About started that? dying laughing. And okay. he goes, well, he goes, lucky hey, for you. Well, here's the thing. He goes, hey, you want to know the worst part about it is he goes on my inside my bag that I've, I put in there is my police badge on top. Mm-hmm. You can clearly see that on the x-ray that I'm a police officer. Sure. What are you pulling me out for, you know? Um, so we all, we all laughed about it. And uh, again, once we got inside, Alec was like, hey, let's go get some breakfast sandwiches or whatever. Went in there. The woman had run out who had checked us in. And she was the one making the sandwiches. Same four people for the entire airport. Uh, it was really, really Funny after that, like we were just like, okay, cool. And sure. uh, luckily we were able to make it in on time. Second flight, by the way, still late. Sure. Still late. All I was hoping was just to grab, you know, a couple, couple, three hours of, of winks mm-hmm. and uh, ended up getting an hour in. And then we had to go along our merry way after that. Sure. But uh, first stop was, was at a brewery and just to, to, to get out of that car. In ni- it was 98 degrees at like 
I don't know, five o'clock. And I was 98 degrees, and I was like, oh my God. Here's what I can say about Orlando, okay? Everybody seems like they had a relationship with Casey Anthony. Yeah, you did find people with uh, one to two degrees of separation. Yes, five people in, in the first day there, and they had pictures. So it wasn't like, hey, I'm trying to, to ride off this fame or whatever. They were like, yeah, man, I got pictures. Two, two people were embarrassed, and they because we tried to get them on the show. Mm-hmm. They were embarrassed that they, they were in a picture with Casey Anthony, and one of them was the 4th of July. I'm not going to say who this is. Um, one of them was that 4th of July pick where they were like, she's out partying, top mom's out right. partying. And they were like, hey, man, this picture was on the front page of the Orlando, Orlando Sentinel. They had great jobs at like normal companies, and sure. they were like, hey. Hey. What easy their boss called him in the next sure. day. They were like, what the fuck? And they were like, hey, we just happened to be at the same party with her. We don't know her. We didn't know. And it was months before. Right. So now we're getting labeled as and, and they were telling us how the media like do the media completely spun that in a different way. That was a party well before she died. Oh, and yeah. Everything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah. that. I didn't. I, I didn't. You know, well, you can guess they get the pictures they can get. Right. Yeah. So. We, we, we wanted to have them on the show, and they both declined. Uh, the other one was somebody who was dating her at the time. And they were like, yeah, just my best friend was dating her, and shit was fucked up, and she was out of control and partying or whatever. And I was like, no way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, that was really odd. And, and again, everybody had pictures. So it's not like, oh, hey, yeah, I fucking knew the her. The funniest part of the whole Casey Anthony thing because it's real funny. Yeah, it's a real, real oh, laugh. Oh, it's a hoot. No, but the, I guess the only real funny part about that story to me is when, so she always said that she worked at this place, right? Yes. And kept telling the cops I had to go to work. I yep. worked at this place and the Zanny the nanny was watching, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And she, the fact that she went so far as to go into this place that she said she worked mm-hmm. with the cops walk through the hallways like pretend to like know people yeah and then finally got to the end of a hallway and just turned around and was like i don't i don't work here beauty of that story met one of the cops who was with her on that oh, thing because it's just like what did you think what are you thinking is gonna happen are they gonna see your eyes and like pretend to know you yeah or are you gonna be able to like find some office that's empty (laughs) like i like the thought process of it to like go deep into that of like do you were you just gonna go into a room be like you see this is my work yeah with cops behind you i asked one of the cops and i said what what was that what what the what was the real story and they were like we knew. You knew. Well, but they know. They always know, but they have to She get... just kept taking them around the entire thing. And right. like it became laughable to them of like, where is this? Well, it is, but it's all leading to some kind of evidence. So they can't just know. They also have to have the evidence, right? So yeah. they're like, you. I feel like they always know. But yes. that's not enough. Yeah, yeah. So they have to go along with this. Oh, okay, you work here? Cool, let's go. Yeah. Let's just go and say hi to your boss or something, right? <laughs> Because it would be fun at that point to encounter someone with that, I mean, that pathological that you could just be like, oh, really? Zanny the nanny? Where she live? Huh? Where she live? Where she Want to take she us to the house? Out. Yeah. And then it's like an abandoned apartment somewhere. Oh, I guess she moved out. Yeah. I love it. So that was, that was crazy about Orlando. The other thing that was crazy was there was, uh, you know, beyond, besides the Disney World thing, which every, everything is seems to be built around Disney World, sure. including like our hotel and, and all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Charles Zeller, uh, who hooked us up with, with all of that. Um, besides that, there was a Holy Land experience. Uh, if you're wondering what that is at home, because I was real curious, because you pass it on the highway every mm-hmm. single time you, you go there, mm-hmm. uh, in and out of your place. Mm-hmm. It is medieval times, but for Jesus Christ. Perfect. Um, Book it. Not a lot of words. Book it. <laughs> Book it. We're going. That sounds amazing. So you remember the pirate thing that we went to? Yeah. In, uh, in medieval Beach? times. Yeah. I remember yeah. all of it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they had that. But for Jesus. Perfect. And like 
he comes down out of the ceiling and does mm-hmm. a whole thing. And then you eat food with Christ and the apostles and, and all of this the stuff. The real ones? No, not the real ones. Oh, obviously, okay. But, um, yeah. I mean, you never know. You don't know. You don't you, know you don't what's know. real and what's not. You know what no. I mean with that kind of stuff. Is it really them? Yeah. <laughs> right? Because it's all just a fun little a fun little story. Anyway. But it was huge. Like, a massive structure right on the highway. And you're like, my goodness, man. How many people come to this? That I mean, apparently a lot. Because mm-hmm. it was a massive structure. So you had I would that. go. I'm not even joking. I would but go I would for go. the story of it sure. and then to, to talk about it on air for sure. That's why I go anywhere anymore. <laughs> the story of it, right? Do you think I like Olive Garden? No. We'll find out if we get to go. I think you find out tonight. So, you know, as airs uh, Wednesday, we'll find out Gosh. tonight. Gosh. Yeah. Tell me something, girl. <laughs> no. Oof. My voice is rough. Uh, The other thing about Orlando, which uh, they were definitely not set up for a big game like this or or a bowl game. We went to the World Camping Bowl, right? Mm -hmm. Had never heard of of that place. Sure. It was built in the 1930s and basically just a cement structure that is in kind of the ghetto. No hotels, bars, restaurants, or anything around it cool real cool yep mad cool yeah <laughs> kind of like a greek sort of mm-hmm. <laughs> rock stru- ruins was it in ruins almost okay. we had, look we had front row tickets and it was rad so i yeah, kind of looked fun it, it did yeah. um but i don't know what the like looking up at the rest of the stadium i'm like man are you just sitting on some or how does that work because that uh, ohio state's like that too yeah. it's such an old stadium and they hold no. They know they hold like the Citrus Bowl there, one other bowl game, and that's about it. Um, and they were serving White Claw at the game, of course, which is amazing, by the way. White Claw. I think it's really, really hilarious that White Claw is now so huge that when the, the guy was walking up and down the aisles, they're asking, "Do you want Budweiser or White Claw?" Um, the majority of folks, White Claw. When did you start saying folks? Uh, was that an Orlando thing? Yeah, it's an Orlando oh, thing. Oh, wow. Just picking that up the, the lay of the loo. That is new. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of folks. Wow. Um, yep. Gosh, it's like I don't even know you anymore. Back from Orlando. I'm Back a different from person. Orlando, and it's like I don't, I can't even have a conversation. Yeah. It's so, just all different words and stuff. Now, were you drinking White Claw, and how do you feel about it? Y- yes, and I'll tell you why. Because um, it's so hot. One, it's so hot, and like beer in that weather is... A no go, right? It's heavy. Yeah, yeah, it's heavy, and, and, and to be completely dead honest about it, uh, it is higher proof than Budweiser. So, like, you're, like you're looking at a is six, it? yeah. Okay. You're looking at a six versus you know Bud Light's you know four and a half. Got it. Um, ABV wise, and you're like, oh, yo, I'm getting fucked up, and they were charging more for the White Claws than they were the Budweisers. Higher, higher ABV. Yeah. So it was just like, all right, cool, man. Yeah. Let's get down on that. And it's, you know, again, it's hot. So you're just like, yeah. Yeah. And I'm even not even. Gonna... I went to a rose and a truly the other day. Mm. And, you know, I don't, the, I only, it doesn't matter how hot it is, will drink a thick red. Yeah, 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 yeah. You. <laughs> and that's just a little bit about me, right? <laughs> It doesn't matter. I have to stick to that. <laughs> if I could, don't, you know, bad things happen. It could be 150 degrees and you'll drink a thick cab. A cab. Yeah. I would know. I, the, the most I was doing in a uh, hot girl summer is Pinot. Okay. But now that it's getting into sad boy fall, I can go back to my thicker zins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And cabs. Yeah. Right? Well... Either or, uh, we clawed it up. No, you know, the, the no laws, obviously, when you're drinking the claws. We mm-hmm. clawed it up all night. And they, spon- they actually sponsored our party Friday night. That's amazing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real. Dude after dude was, was pounding those things down because it was, you know. Because it was there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, the other part was because uh, Tactical Brewery sponsored the party on uh, Saturday. But you're at a craft 
brew house. Mm-hmm. So it was like, you're getting high ABVs where you're just like, all right, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, you don't need the. No. Yeah. That, you can get a niner up there and be like, all right, great. I'm great. I can I can feel like a, a man again. Right. Uh, but yeah, just pounding butt heavies was when it's lower, brother. It's too tough. It's too tough. So we get out of the game. And again, every time we go to these things, no signals really, right? Right. You can kind of no send a couple. On your beat. Yeah. Facebook post or you know or, or stories where you're like oh that's going through two hours later or whenever it is right mm-hmm. and uh, you have no way to get an Uber or anything else and it's exactly what happened after that game and there's nowhere to go because you're in the in the hood no restaurants no bars whatever we started walking down I for the highway on the side of the highway you ever see those people like walking down the highway and you're like, and you're like what the fuck is their problem. I can genuinely kill somebody? say yeah. this for mm-hmm. the first time in my life. I walked down a highway out of necessity to try to get to an exit where I could get my phone to work, all of us, and to get a car home. Uh, we had nothing. So luckily, one of our you know, friends who was with us, Nick, because uh, we, were, we were pounding down claws, obviously. No cash at this point. He had a hundo tucked away. We found a furniture truck. A oh dang! Dead serious furniture truck, two dudes, and literally at this point, and I, I may or may not have tried to steal a car before this, uh, just to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> See, whatever, man. I, Florida, that's Florida. Yes, it is. It is. That's 100%. what those. That's what those folks. That's what is it? Folks. Folks. That's what those folks do over there. Yeah, you, you lose your mind in that heat. Mm-hmm. So at this point, walking, I, I think we walked close to five and a half miles. And this is no. This is a true story. There you go. We find this furniture truck, and I think Alec, you took a picture of it, didn't you? Or no, it was I'm sorry, Dan. Dan I would did. I would Venmo him, but he doesn't do any of that kind of stuff. Who? Nick. No, no. I. Look. He doesn't deal with electronic money. Old school, and and look. And it it worked out this time. It worked out real Thank well. Thank God he doesn't do that much electronic money. Yeah, so we, he we likes go, to keep it gangster. We go up to these guys in the furniture truck, and we're like, "Yo, man." Uh, we'll give you we'll give you whatever money you want just to take us home. We can't get out of here. We're stuck. We are stuck here. And like at this point, everything is empty too. Uh, nothing we can do. Ubers were like, "Go fuck yourself." We're not even coming down there um, because of the, the part of town we were in. Yeah. And uh, this guy looks at me and he goes, "Hundred, hundred bucks." And I was like, "Shit." I, Dan and I didn't have any what cash because we we blown it all on things or whatever. And uh, Nick's like, "Cool, I got I got a hundred on me." Nick gives this guy a hundred dollars. It's the, it's the two of them in this truck, and the guy is holding it up like he works for the fucking mint department. Oh, stop! In like he can tell. Yeah, like he can tell what this hundred if no, it's real we, or false. We're giving you a fake hundred. Hundred in now. a furniture truck mm-hmm, to get us home, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, then he hands it to his buddy, and his buddy's just like, I mean, just I fucking this thing. And I was like, Hey guys, do you, you have one of those pens, guys? Yeah. Do you think uh, three white dudes in the middle of, you know, the goddamn ghetto would, would, would give you a fake hundred at this point? So we get in with them and we realize we have like a, again, Orlando traffic. We realize we have like a fucking 30, 40 minute ride or whatever in the back of a furniture truck with these dudes. Now, luckily, there was a second row in this thing, but we're all smashed in together, sardined up and... uh We're trying to make small talk with these guys because they look like killers. They look like murderers, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, so uh, what brought you to Orlando? You know? Uh, And he was like, work. The driver's like, work. And it it was two white dudes, right? And I go, cool, "Cool, man. Um, What kind of work you do? You know, whatever. Yeah, this? Furniture. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, oh, are you guys picking stuff up after the game? Like, you know, tables and chairs and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah. And uh, I was like, uh, how'd, you, how'd you get into this? You know, trying to podcast him or something. Just try to get some answers out sure. of it. Sure. And he goes, it's the only place that hired me after prison. I was Blammo. Like, Great. Blammo. And, and you I go, shut up. I go, you no, shut right I, I didn't. Up. I didn't ask him one more question. Sure. I go, oh. I was just like, uh, you mind if I ask what you were in for? And he goes, attempted murder. Rest of the, wa- the ride back was pretty Pretty quiet after oh that. Thank God. Pretty quiet after that. And uh, uh, we're staying at this. Again, our, our, a friend of ours, Charles Zeller, had hooked us up with these uh, cool hotels. They were very Disney-ish. Um, okay. 
Nothing like a furniture truck dropping you off at a happy, fun time. Mm-hmm. By those two Disney resorts. Bruisers. Yeah. yeah. Then by a guy who had attempted murder. And um, yeah. But I feel like that's B, B is you out there. It, it's, it started to feel like that. Because the night before, I'd met somebody attempted who... Attempted murder, yes. attempted murder, yeah, yeah, Same yeah, Same thing, yeah, you got yeah. seven and a half years in prison. I, I don't, I didn't know where to go from that. But then I just chalked it up to Florida. Like, everything yeah. that I, I was like, hey, Florida. Hey. And it's got to be the heat. Yeah. That is the only, like, the heat mixed with everything else. Like, you lose your mind. Because there was gorgeous parts of, that, that we were in down there. Like, there was a place called Baldwin Park where uh, Tactical Brewery was, like... That whole place, like that brewery is one of the nicest breweries I've ever been to. Mm-hmm. There was nice places, but the rest of it, you're like, oh, all Very right. spread out. Yes. Um, takes a long time to get anywhere. Yep. Lots of drugs. A lot of drugs. Um, Shocking amount of drugs. Yeah. So all of that kind of equals yeah. murder. And there was even a couple of cops I was chatting with. They were like, man, I wish, I wish Florida would just legalize cocaine. And I was like, really? And they were like, yeah, man, you know, we're tired of like losing officers over it, you know, like dope deals and shit like mm-hmm. that. Like legalize it and let these fucking idiots kill themselves. Is yeah, that, yeah, is yeah, that yeah. if that's what they're going to do? Yeah. And I was just like, fuck, Dang, man. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. So uh, that in a nutshell was Orlando. And all I kept thinking was like on the airport, like on the on the ride back, I was like, you want to say to yourself, I'll never have to go to this city again. Mm hmm. Nope. We'll have to go down there for Disney World for the kids. Oh, yeah. But now that's a, you go straight there, you stay in your little fantasy world, right? Mm. You don't really need to leave the resort. Yes. Except for to get to the airport. Yeah. From what I hear. Yeah. You do and you don't. Enough about you. I'm into, (laughs) I'm into Lizzo now. Really? Yeah. Okay. I gave in. I was fighting it. Why? I don't know, because you know I don't like... I am, I'm both easily persuaded and resist pop culture. Mm-hmm. Simultaneously. It's a weird place that I live, right? Sure. In where I'm like, no, 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 no. Nah, it, there's no way. And then if you put it in my face enough and are persuasive enough, yeah. then I'm in. You're all in. I'm all in. What's, uh, what happened? How did this come about? Well, the Today Show. Well, she performed <laughs> the Today Show? Yeah. I get it. And killed it. Yep. And then she like went back in, talked to them for a long time, was hilarious, funny, was better than them. Like she made the conversation go when they were like not knowing what to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pro. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know where she's going to go next, but I figure, you know, I, I, look, I, I, cause to me, that's one of the, probably one of the ho- hottest, biggest artists of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I knew about her. I also saw, uh, she did a performance maybe six weeks ago and one of those like tiny office things for NPR. Okay. You know what I'm talking about where they, you get together with, with your band, but it's a very small space oh, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you perform and mm-hmm. it's like, it's like morning become a, becomes eclectic or some shit like that um i forget what they call it like i want to say it's like tiny office or tiny space like uh recording okay um yeah i'm sure all of that's right oh boy i hate when i have to go to no <laughs> this like, Alec you will cannot look it up. use your computer no i'm talking to you look up lizzo tiny office performance npr just see what the yeah npr just see what the actual name of it is here um, so I saw that and it was about 20 minutes and she just absolutely destroyed it. It's on YouTube yeah. and it, it was crazy. And, uh, her song's amazing. She deserves all the accolades she's getting. Yeah. Tiny desk concert. Boom. Fucking nailed it, man. Mm. Um, I mean, rewind the tape, but yeah, you got it close enough. Tiny office, tiny desk. <laughs> the desk is inside an office. Are we like there? I said, close enough. Close enough. And... She was fantastic in it. And it's uh, whenever people do that, it's mostly acoustic. Yeah. So you watch it and you can really see if people are talented or not when they when they go a coup. Mm-hmm. You're not going to see Britney Spears show up and do a tiny 
tiny office experience or tiny desk no, experience. No, and even at Today Show, too, like, if you're really singing without a backing track, running all around in that heat and, like, mm-hmm. dancing and still able to, like, kill those notes, I mean, that's huge. Yes. Yeah. Because most of them will be, like, if they can't sing, they're, like, just do my backing track and I'll sing every once in a while. Right. No, she destroyed yeah. it. She yeah. destroyed it. Yeah, she's good. Um, another one who's just great, which I'm, I, I'm, this saddens me to say almost. Because we've talked about her on the show numerous times. Mm-hmm. We think she's fake and we don't really like her whole shit was Taylor Swift. Mm. Look, I don't have to like her as a person to enjoy how great she is. Her music. And I do not like her as right. a person. Right. Hardcore dislike. So I catch a, a, I'm waiting in the airport. I catch a, like a five minute interview that she was doing with someone and she was bitching about the Scooter Braun thing and blah, blah, blah. It, again, a huge turnoff, but she was talking about her new album and she had this look in her eyes like I'm the fucking greatest. And therefore I was like, you know what? Let's find out. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Let's find out. Um, and I, on the flight back. I popped on her album, her new album, listened to it front to back. It was like 18 tracks. Uh, this is where it, it's sad for me is she absolutely destroyed it. Oof. The album is amazing. I would say 16 out of 18 tracks were just money. And that's not my genre. That's not what I rock to. Like That is not how I get down. But I, tr- I appreciate music mm-hmm. and all different kinds of music. And I listen to, I try to listen to everything that comes out, including Lizzo and everybody else. And um, like Lizzo's album is great. Taylor Swift album is great. Like, and I understand for her fan base why that she is that massive. She does not miss. And it is astounding. I mean, it really is to have that many hits continuously being pumped out to the public. Like people would kill to have one, two tracks off of that album. And that would probably make a successful album for them. Um, any band or, or singer and she just absolutely crushed like 16 out of 18 you're like mm. god damn it man uh and, and another album came out a week ago that i was super amped about was a uh, young thug that i liked all his shit in the past everybody said he was a genius hated the album it was like maybe was two, bust. two songs on there that i liked right um and fucking taylor swift man just knocked it out it's, I mean, it is absolutely insane to me. Um, and I think she did it with uh, Lena Dunham's ex fiance Anto- or Antonoff. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know, I didn't know that guy until he had started dating Lena Dunham, I guess. Well, you knew him from fun, the band. Yeah. But it's, it's one thing to, like, you take fun and you take that album of how great it was, right? And all of those hits on there. Sometimes you can get lucky with one, right? Where mm-hmm. it's like you shit out all of your creativity, especially in music or writing books or, or scripts or movies, because usually you're thinking about one idea, one concept, and then it's all this time spent up in your mind. You put it out. It's great. And then, you know, you have the sophomore slump, right? Mm-hmm. So I think it's pretty remarkable to go from fun to, to Taylor Swift. To Lord. He did Lords too. So he did that ne- that green light, like the that was yeah. a great album too. Yeah. So Shit. he went from that to Taylor Swift. He helped someone else, but man, but yeah. So I look. He's an insanely uh, talented producer, and he's probably just going to get bigger and bigger from here. Ha- has to. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, there was because I told you this. You know, I had to go down to. Uh, pick up some food and I, I put, I even put that Taylor Swift album on in the car um, with my child, obviously because every child loves Taylor Swift. And just so I could check because there were subtleties in some of these things that I thought, I, you know, I thought I heard on a plane uh, because it's loud mm-hmm. and you're like, man, did I hear like church bells or something like that? Or somebody whispering in the background? Mm-hmm. Yes. All of it. There was like a bunch of weird layers to it and everything. And it was like, God damn it, man. That's Jack for sure. Yeah. So was, he does all that. Cool it, it, it was really good. And that's yeah. not, again, that's not something I rock to. Like, I'm not going to listen to that at the gym. I'm not going to blare that on the way home from work. Like, right. Uh, but I'm able to put on individual albums and say, all right, this is great or this is not anything across the board. Um, but yeah, 
That's just a little something about you, you know? No, but look, it's one thing to come on a show and talk shit about people. And look, again, I'm I'm not going to talk shit on somebody else's greatness. Yes. But I'm not going to talk shit on somebody else's greatness where I'm like, hey, man, that person's super talented. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, weird. I'm probably get a lot of messages about that of like, Jesus, dude. Was it hard that you're going that hard on Taylor Swift Mm. today? Yeah, I am. It's great. Uh, We got some sponsors, though. Jabe's put this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. I'm surprised how big this company has grown to the point where everyone at these live shows is like, dude, I I have a fucking ghost bed, man. And it is the best. And I can't thank you enough. Um, and they, they also feel like our, like our show is like legitimized. We're like, man, you guys must be huge. You have Ghostbed as a sponsor. And I was just like, are you saying that because of how great the bet is? Or yeah. Uh, either way, man, uh, everybody was stoked on it. And I had three people that actually thanked me for like, hey, man, thanks for not lying about this because it was, you know, a bet is expensive. And yeah. if you would have fucked me over on this, I'd be really pissed off about it. Yeah. So we didn't. And uh, we're super grateful to Ghostbed for being our chief sponsor for the year. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today uh, and get a new mattress. As always, for first responders, 15% off. Same with military. 15% off of everything in the store. Mattresses, pillows, sheets. Uh, the adjustable bases are incredible. Uh, and if you're you know, just a regular human like myself, you get uh, $200 off uh, Ghost Lux, $100 off the classic one, free pillows. And as always, 36 months, no interest pays you go program. No one is doing that except for GhostBed at GhostBed.com forward slash drinking bros. Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Somebody bought a huge case of Strikeforce and, and took it into the party on Friday night. Yeah. Everybody was drinking that shit. Because it goes really good with White Claw. And they do have a White Claw now. They have a White Claw Pure, which is no flavor, Mm -hmm. that you can add your own flavor to it. So I suggest a Strike Force in the White Claw Pures. That's what everyone was doing. No lie. Every single person. And I didn't. Because they're smart like me. Yeah. I didn't know that. I had no idea. And I was like, go. It says it goes great with vodka. And you're like, oh, so beer. Because it's still beer. Sure. But you're putting vodka in it? Yeah. Dango, dango, dango. Blams. <laughs> Blamskies. Uh, so way to go, Strike Force. You did it, man. Uh, people are... People, people were are, raging because of you. I know. Four amazing flavors. Orange, original, grape, and lemon. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. Rest on your bar top or countertop, and you can just boom, boom. Pop a couple squirts in and go... Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. And uh, the, the beauty of this, same with the, the White Claws, no carbs or sugars. So everybody was doing that shit, man. I get yep. it. So you I can get be it. drunk and skinny. Yep. Uh, Revolution, we all promo want. code, 20% off. StrikeForceEnergy.com. Last but not least, this is what you came for. StraightRazors.com. Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you rock! Yeah, you do. Whew. That was really loud. Whew. You really? That was really loud. Had a lot of joyce behind that. Sorry. Jabes. No, I'm proud of you. Joyce. I'm proud of you. Straightrazors.com. Let's get all the products you need to be a real man in this life. To be groomed. To, to be look groomed. Good. It's great straight razors. They got uh, fucking beard oils, mustache waxes, conditioners, cologne. Uh, straightrazors.com's even got a kit. You can get your name engraved on the on the blade too, which is nice. Do it. You know I've been under the blades. Yeah. Oh and it did catch on, by the way. A lot of people said that to me, Japes. Did they? Wow. Did. That's so great for you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And so did uh, you rake it. Everybody kept saying you rake it. Yeah, I know. A lot of my stuff catches on really hardcore and so i'm happy that you had one yeah 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 thanks do you know what i mean because i'm much. just sort of like a a catch like a catchphrase maker mm-hmm. machine okay factory ah possibly sure if that's what we're going with 
you know? Just as far as, you know, p- things people can hold on to. Yeah. Repeat back. Absolutely. Use in their lives. Use pound it, sign. Use on their children. Many pounds. I've come up with many pound signs. Yes, you have. You have. Multi-talented. And yes. this is the last day of this hair looking this uh, horrible. Yours? Yep. I think your hair looks great. Okay. Um, I know nothing. I've been told. Yeah, I've been told many times. So I see. See that? Yeah. Look at that. What is that? Regrowth. Look okay. At that. So can you see the line? It's too, look, subscribe to YouTube uh, for Jables <laughs> showing her, her line, her regrowth line. Um, look at that, you guys. Isn't that called an ombre? Well, I've been, I've been faking it for long enough. And now it's like you can't fake it anymore. It's a line. Okay. Ombre is like it has to like be painted and like blended in. Right, right, right. So I've been, <laughs> anytime somebody says something, I'm like, it's fashion. Look it up. Ever yeah. heard of it? Ugh. Uh, by the way, straightrazors.com, revolution, 20% off. And I didn't say that, I don't think. Sorry, you probably did say it. Did I? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't, James. Uh, your regrowth is nice. Thanks. It's very nice. Uh, did somebody say that on the internet? Yeah. 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 Internet's the worst, right? Yeah. Somebody said, somebody said something shitty to me today. Well, you're at a different level <laughs> that people can say shitty stuff to you. I've got like 10,000. So right. like people are still very nice. I still have like a small group of like nice people. Like if you aren't, if you follow me, you probably like me, at right? Jesse Wiseman, yeah. And then when you get to, Brendan Schaub deals with this too, right? When you get to a certain level, Oof. people feel like, I don't know, like you're not real. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're able to talk to you in a different way because they're like, well, they're fine. They have this many followers or they're doing great or whatever. Like that you, That's how you know you've made it is when people feel comfortable enough to be really mean to you. I guess, man. So I, I put up a picture smiling with somebody else. And, uh, you know, usually everybody's pretty pleasant. One comment is this guy just goes, hey, man, uh, why don't you fix your fucking grill? Looks like your teeth are mustard, yellow, you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, I, yeah. And I go, hey, man, it was literally because I was eating hot dogs with mustard <laughs> right before the picture taken. No lie. I but had, guys are like that too, like. But it was a dude I know, saying it to me, and I'm like, I know, dudes are. Hey, man, you guys joke around with each other in a way that would like destroy women. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we joked around with each other in the way that you guys do, we're not equal. Here's the problem: he wasn't joking. So somebody wrote back underneath it. Uh, I, I did. I wrote, he is and he isn't. Well, they no, no, like no. jab. He, okay. So okay. here's what happened: I wrote back underneath it. I go, hey, man. I actually was literally eating was mustard. eating hot dogs yes, yes. probably five minutes before Seconds this picture's before. taken. Yeah. Um, I have to, like, at some point, I have to eat lunch in my day. Mm-hmm. Super sorry about this, you know, right. whatever. I'm really sorry I offended you. And somebody else, you know, chimed in right afterwards and was like, hey, man, what the fuck? Like, you know? Um, and <laughs> to this guy, and he goes, man, I don't understand. Fucking celebrities can afford to, you know, they got to take pictures all the time. Why the fuck wouldn't he just buy new teeth? And I'm like, again, Buy new teeth. that's what he said. And I go again, man, just finished eating lunch with mustard and yeah. hot dogs. And my, nothing I can do about that. I cannot brush my teeth every single second of the day after a meal or whatever. And uh, yeah. Uh, and whoever that was, she got my teeth whitened like fuck, maybe about two months ago, something like that. Like, yeah. I mean, well, I can't the other go in every thing hour. that I noticed, too, is in bigger accounts with way more followers than I have is that um, people kind of talk to each other in the comments. Yes. And that's the like fun of it. So this guy like coming to your defense and then them getting in a fight is part of it. That's exactly what happened. And you don't really, so you put the picture out, you don't really respond anymore. If you have a certain amount of followers, you're basically just like a chat room for people that follow you for various reasons and then they can talk to each other because they don't really even feel like you're reading it. I, I, Do you know what I mean? I did and I responded. So does, no, I know I Brendan know, does but too. Like that's how yeah. He doesn't really anymore, but he'll let people just kind of, I mean, spin out and yeah. do like these weird little threads of 
one of one of them's defending him and the other one's talking shit and they can like fight with each other in the comments. Yeah. This isn't a new concept, but I'm just saying one of the many reasons why I don't love Instagram, but I also like the amount of people that I have following me, like I'm saying, where I'm still a real person. Like they're like very rarely I had that one comment about my hair, which <laughs> I want to say, you're not wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're right. It's just the answer is way too long for me to send back to you, which is like, I have two kids. I'm, you know, we're starting a business. I literally have no time to even do anything, yeah. let alone go to, for, to the hairstylist for two hours. Yeah. How, how is that even going to work? <laughs> so you're not wrong. No. But I don't get I don't get many of those comments only because I am at a lower level that they still think of me as a real person. So you should <laughs> feel happy that they don't even think of you as real. They're just like Oof. commenting on a picture and they don't even think that you're going to see the comment. And if they do, it's like, yeah. Right? You still Got read em. it though and you're still paranoid where you're like, God damn it, do I just not eat going out or what happens after this? Um, you either, you just, you just don't live. Yeah. Or you live. <laughs> it's really up to you. You don't live or you live. Right. You um, can do how I do. Just don't post anything ever. <laughs> Until you feel like you're having a really good day. And even then, they'll find something. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you feel like you you're do? looking good to finally post a picture, right? Yeah. Yo, what up with that regrowth? <laughs> Well, you just ruined it for the rest of the class. Here's here's now what it is. Now she's not going to post ever again. Here's what it is. So <laughs> here's what it is. Gosh, you have so many new <laughs> new catchphrases. Yeah, you're welcome. Here's what it is, folks. Yep. Here's what it is, folks. <laughs> Enjoy it. That's a good one. Enjoy <laughs> it. Uh, I want to I want to uh, chat about this. Is your favorite day today? You never said anything all day. It's my favorite day? Yeah, you know, every, every day now is named something. Oh, like yeah. fucking pizza day or mm -hmm. dog day or, mm -hmm. you know. It's so, cat paws day, whatever it is. Cat today, today is uh, women's equality day. Mm -mm. So, God damn it. you didn't. Uh, yeah. Shut the fuck up, you guys. We're good. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's crazy. Right after dog day. That makes sense. Yeah. Because it was. It was I know, dog, day, it's dog yeah. day yesterday, and yeah. now it's... <laughs> Women's Equality Day, the next day. And then it'll be Donut Day, and it'll all fucking not matter. <laughs> but somebody paid, because I'm looking on Twitter right now, somebody paid uh, at the top here for the hashtag, you know, because you can have your promoted by okay. posts, you know, at the top. Okay. Pay X amount of dollars. Mm -hmm. Usually it's like fucking the new Superman movie or some bullshit. Um, and it's hashtag equality can't wait. I mean, we're pretty goddamn close, aren't we? Like, I don't, you know. I think definitely, I will say, I can only speak for women, right? Yes. So, you know, the thing with uh, other races, racism, systemic oppression, all of that, I cannot speak to that. Right. Because I'm not in that. But as far as uh, women... <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if it's like I always say, I don't know if it's equal, but I don't think the way to to get there is um, s screaming and crying about it. Yeah. And making sure that everyone knows how how unequal we are like, shh, right? Hush. Just pretend you're not and we will be fine. Yeah. Right. Just well, pretend you're not so weak and meek and need so much help. And then we can like get in the room, be powerful. And turn it around. The, re the reason I, I bring this up with the equality thing is they're, they're now about to make something here that is going to make all of us not really equal, but kind of scared to be equal. Um, if that makes any sense. We, we had talked about this a few months back, about China developing a credit score for all of its citizens. And the credit score isn't like your financial thing. It is yourself as a human being, mm -hmm. whether or not you're happy, sad, fun, polite, mm -hmm. um, and they're going to give you a 
score on that. So every human is going to have a score, what your finances are, mm -hmm. kind of car you drive, mm -hmm. all that stuff. You're going to have a score as a human that is exactly like a credit score here in America. So like Gattaca. Is, is that what Gattaca? I, I haven't seen the movie. The in only years. thing. Oh, well, I long, just, long time. I just keep going back to Gattaca because it was this, um, you know, dystopian society where if you were in a certain, born a certain way, that's mm -hmm. it. Right. Right. You cannot do any better than that. And if you're poor, you are that way. Right. Right. And then everyone just finds their place. And that's it. Now, in this China thing or whatever, are they able to get their score better depending on... Yeah, things they do in their life. And here's the, here's the craziest thing to me. Because I was like, all right, this is China. It's a communist country. Like, I get it. That shit will never happen here. And I kind of, when we talked about this a few months back, I just kind of dismissed it. And I was like, oh, that's fucking China for you, you know? Mm. No. It says that social media companies like Facebook are starting to develop this scoring system as well now for humans um, here, which the government's not doing it. So you could go on somebody else's profile and mm -hmm. say that I think that person's shitty. That's a shitty person mm -hmm. and give them a, a low rating. And that's going to become your score on some of, some of these social media sites. And they said there, there's a huge article on it in fast company, which is actually there was, sorry, there was a black mirror on it. Yes, with a correct, but but it was way into the future, right? It was way into the future, yeah. Supposedly, yeah. Well, the Black Mirror is all like it's this nondescript sort of future that we're not sure how far away it is or how close it is. The robot dogs are here, I mean, right? Robot dogs, and then it was who was who was the girl? Red haired Howard. Uh, Bryce. Yes, Bryce Dallas Howard. Yeah, yeah, and she was she in that episode, and they were like. Everyone has a certain score. And if you have like a bad social interaction with somebody or something like, or a friend, a group of friends starts like not liking you, your score goes down. Right. So that's exactly what it is no? Yes. And like b what the dress that she bought and her car and everything. Mm -hmm. And fucking black mirror, dude, watch out. I know they really are like, but the, the scary thing to me is, is like, cause Facebook is already doing cryptocurrency. They're working on that behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So that's going to become a thing mm -hmm. where, you know, they're going to try to rival, I guess, uh, Bitcoin with it. Right. Okay. So you can buy certain things on Facebook. I think, I think I heard Amazon is doing it as well. Now, Amazon, it makes sense, right? All the shit you buy on Amazon. I'm surprised they don't have their own bank and their own currency through that where you're just buying shit on Amazon because Let's face it, a lot of the things you buy off the line, for me personally, uh, it's about 90% of the things I buy off the line, usually mm -hmm. Amazon, Amazon yeah, yeah, yeah. purchases. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would make sense that they, they were their own bank and they can give you, hey, yeah. we'll give you a line of credit to buy that fridge. Sure. Just make it, you know, 90 easy installments of whatever and we'll just a small interest mm -hmm. going to us. I get that. I don't know what you're going to buy on Facebook, I guess, unless they're going to try to turn it into something like that. The scary thing to me is if this actually does go down, um, this will make people feel sh shitty about their lives. Yeah. Like, there's got to be... Or a will it be incentive to try and make your life better? I, I don't know. And that's the question, I guess. To me personally, it would want to make me get off of social media altogether. But it's all got to be arbitrary, right? So, like, what is your idea of what a good life is, right? So, for some people, it would be, you know just hanging out but what if what if there was a number on your facebook profile mm -hmm. that just said jesse wiseman is a out of 800 she is a 498 human never happen i would definitely be sevens if not <laughs> only be only socially right if there was any kind of um academic academic score of like how smart I am or something like this. But they factor that in, yeah, would, where you went to college and stuff. I would go lower. So that's the only reason that I say 700 mm. and not a, not a solid eight. so 800. So again, this would not apply to me, so I'm not really sure what the conversation is because I would be very high socially. Um, just I, everything else is perfect. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So you think, right? But if that number showed up, 
Right. Because not only do people feel bad about comments on YouTube or Twitter or Instagram and all that shit. Imagine putting a rating with that person with it. Like, I think you do anyways. I think you already, your mind already kind of puts a number and a thing to people anyways. And you're lying if you say you don't. So you look at the number of followers, you look at their pictures, you already are doing that in your mind. So what's really the difference? And that's why I hate social media anyway. So you're already from these pictures doing that. Are you not? No. You will look at somebody's profile. I bet whether you're admitting it to yourself or not, you're giving them a mental place in your mind as far as where they are. <sighs> no. This and person I'll, is da da da. I'll or this tell you person. why. I am more impressed with people who don't have social media. Um, simply for the fact that they're able to get away with but it. But if they do have it mm -hmm. and you can look through pictures or you can read comments or you can whatever you are already putting them in a category uh, if you see this and this in this picture or this person they're hanging out with this person or they've gone to like this many places or they have this many things of their kids or their job or the way their font is their profile picture their followers everything is already in your mind of giving them some kind of score. It may not be numerical, but it's definitely like an order in your mind of where you think they are in their life. No. If they're on social media. And don't say no because you're lying. It is. And I'll tell you the only, the only, I'll be totally honest about it. The only way I do is if it's a guest that's coming on one of these shows. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't have a lot of social media followers or whatever, like I'll, yes, that I will check out in where I'm like, all right, cool. I mean, for real, check out in the fact that like, you know, look, there's still going to be guests and all that other stuff, obviously. But I'm like, why doesn't that person have more followers? And then I'm usually wrong. I'm, and that's, the, that's what the scary thing for me about this is, is I'll usually, yes, a guest or somebody like that, I'll judge by how many followers or mm -hmm. comments or whatever it is. And then I'm usually wrong because they show up and they're amazing. And I'm like, oh, well, they just don't, they don't really care about social media. They don't really do that. And then I'm pissed at myself for prejudging them where I'm like, oh, fuck, man. Uh, it happened a couple months ago with a guest. And there is the cycle. So Yes, but I don't, I, so imagine depends on what you attaching present. a number to that now. Mm -hmm. Fuck no, I don't even want that to enter my mind about people before I meet them and actually make a decision on my own. Because there is outside factors where you're not going to have a choice on it. You might have a profession that people might not like and they're automatically going to ding you for that. I guess they, what they I'm saying what is the, old, the whole idea of social media is presenting something different than what you actually are. So who even cares about the number anyways? You're already presenting. I think people will, man. Like you really, how, how many times have you looked at somebody's profile and you can actually like really figure out how they really, really are? Well, so here, here's what I get all the time. Whenever we go out to these events and all this stuff is like, you know, we have... Now it's at the 5.7 million listeners on Drinking Bros. Mm -hmm. This is like 1.6 to 1.8. Um, you don't really know because there's not, a, there's not a, a definite number at the end because your, your feeds are getting ripped, right? But I get the same question every single place I go. It's like, I don't understand, man. Why don't you have like, a, like 10 million followers for, on your social media accounts? And then I have to explain the story of like, oh, I'm super late to social media and I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then they'll, pre they'll, they'll judge you on that and be mm -hmm. like, I'm just really surprised. Like, I thought you'd be more famous. And it's yeah. like, no, man, I got a fucking thing. And then you have to explain that. And you're like, all right. Now, if there was a number attached to that as well, then you'd have to deal with that of like, hey, man, you don't have any social media followers. And by the way, you're ranking super low. Like, who are you shitty to or whatever? And I say like, bring it on. I know mine's going to be super high. And the thing that <laughs> I get, the thing that I get a lot is like, you're prettier in person. So I'm good. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Go ahead. Yeah. Give me a number. I'm not even on it anyways. You're prettier in person. I do get that. I know. Which is kind of like. That's a fucking backhanded compliment though. Well, what's up with the lighting, Jamie? You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, what do you mean? I'm prettier in person. We need to work on that then. No. I need to be just as. No, I'm joking. 
I, I, I think they're just so like struck when they first see me just so struck by my beauty that they say that. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But maybe it's not totally true. What you reckon, guys? <laughs> yeah. So I think <laughs> I think that's probably it. It's not that I look much different. It's just uh, it's a, it's a stunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stunning. You are a stunning woman. Right. In person. When you first see me in person. Yeah. Stunning. Yeah. Now. Uh, what's up folks what else do we have boy i don't, I don't know I, I think you went on a like a, a rant and you were like man i'm not sure how this one's gonna end what do we have next what Russ? do we have next folks the monkeys man the fucking monkeys we were talking about these genius goddamn monkeys that they're doing over in china this is all china's fault and they're taking over the world mm-hmm. slowly little by little yeah you know they just bought uh the guy from alibaba um one of the co-founders just bought the brooklyn nets for two and a half billion dollars all-time record for an NBA team. They've already, but China's already bought half of all the studios in Hollywood. Now they're buying up sports teams as well. Like we will be working for them one day. That's that's just what's going to happen, whether we know it or not. Unless we go but to yeah. war, I, like that's the only way out of this. I think at this point. Um, but uh, those fucking monkeys that they're genetically altering and they're putting like human genes and stuff like that in. Um, there's this one fucking genius monkey that uh, they caught sharpening a rock <laughs> before smashing it against the zoo window on an escape bid. Uh, and that is uh, very Jurassic Park percent. Where's Jeff Goldblum? Real. Yeah. Um, that, that's where, that's where we're all headed with all of this, with the, the fucking scores of humans and we're altering monkeys and everything. This monkey, and, and they've got video of it. Um, sharpening a rock and then smashing this window in here um, I hate to get out. I hate to quote Jeff Goldblum. You know, I hate to do that, but it's applicable here. Yeah. Uh, but these damn scientists, they, <laughs> they're so preoccupied with whether or not they can, they don't think about whether they should. <laughs> okay. And that's Jurassic Park. Look it up. But do you know what I mean? Like, you're just trying to figure out if you can do it. Yeah. That you're, what about if you should do it? Stop doing it. Man. Stop doing that one. And I don't usually get in China's business that much. No, right? you don't. I definitely don't. But that one they should probably stop doing, huh? God, the, the fucking, I mean. Stop it. The, the. <laughs> Again, there's video of it, so it's not like this is some crazy story. Sharpening a rock. Sharpening this rock and then bashing this glass in to escape and go back out mm, into the mm, wild. Mm, mm, and, mm. I mean, I'm looking at it. I'm like, this window is fucking shattered. Sure. And the determined look on this monkey's face. Alec, if you could cut this in, it would be great. Um, the, the determined look on this monkey's face. Scary, It I completely bet. knows what it's doing of like... Hey man, this isn't like a fun little game where I'm just gonna throw the rock at the glass or whatever. It it is over its head ba- with two hands bashing this rock into the glass to escape the zoo. It's wild. That is where we're headed. Planet of the Apes, human credit scores, all of it. The only thing that's gonna get us out of this, Shapes, is a goddamn crime corner. Oh no. Do you have one? Yeah. Crime Corner! Crime Corner! Crime Corner! All right. Now, I w- you'd think I'd go Florida, huh? Are you not? Not so, not so. Louisiana man arrested for allegedly biting the head off a small alligator. <laughs> Now listen, <laughs> now listen, you know that, what was the last one I did like this? The guy that was kicking the, the, the birds in the park, right? Yeah. I mean, just roundhousing them. Mm-hmm. Not even like a fun little kick. I mean, practicing hardcore karate moves on yes. them. So a Lafayette man was arrested for animal cruelty mm-hmm. after he was accused of viciously killing a young alligator in one of the state's wildlife management areas now. Um, so the, the, the kid's name is Clayton Voorhees. Ah. 
No, I haven't. I haven't seen a Voorhees in a while. You have. I just don't think you you, you know where Voorhees is. Uh, Jason. Jason Voorhees. Friday the Thirteenth. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Then this is perfect. He'd been arrested for killing an alligator. Um, it, the officials say he visited the whatever wildlife management with two others. Yep. Uh, one of them, a 55 year old guy. Okay. While there, Vo- Voorhees allegedly bit the head off of a roughly foot long alligator as the other two watched the other two guys. Gosh, I just wish I, you know, to be a fly in the backpack of one of these guys, right? Yeah. Is that a, that's not a thing, a fly in the backpack? Well, there's no walls though. So where would I be a fly? Just flying around? I guess. To be a fly flying around. On, on someone's shoulder. On someone's shoulder. Yep. A bee on someone's bonnet. <laughs> it's charged with aggravated cruelty to animals. Um, Who is your detective on this one? Uh, this was a Shane Goodman. Ah, it's your, that's your boy, dude. Well, you know, he just, he sends the best headlines, right? I think That he's... aren't as dark as I want. I just don't want to go that dark, you guys. I don't want real rape and real murder. Yeah. That's not the crimes that I want, you know, because it seems like I'm into crime, but I'm actually not into crime that much. Mm. Like even the castration one from last episode was rough for me. That was a hard one. Sure. That was tough for you. Brutal. Sleepless nights. It was just very dark. It was. To think about that whole thing from beginning to end. This is a a more fun little jaunt because you're just like, what? Were you guys thinking? Yeah. What was the end game? What happened? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of fun to like go on that little ride in your mind, you yeah. know? Not how did they meet in a, in a weird fetish site about cutting balls and dicks off? Sure. How did they somehow get to one of the guy's houses, perform this, yep. videotape it, yep. go to the hospital... It's hard for me to go on that little jaunt. That journey, yeah. On that fun journey. Yeah. But this. Yeah. Just a little foot long. Well, yeah. A little, Get a little, your little foot long alligator. I chop a head off. And again, here's another thing of, you know, when we were talking, we did a couple a long time ago, uh, alligators being sexually assaulted. Yes. By zookeepers. We did, yes. And that I didn't understand either. They're so knobby. Right. And rough and tough. Yeah. The skin. So now biting, the other thing is now biting the head off. Gosh, what is that? Why? I don't know. Now what is know. that? Now if it's a cute little chihuahua, maybe. Right? Um, ooh, still going to say <laughs> no probably on that one. You furry, small, smaller, right? Arr. Like the bat I can see from Ozzy Osbourne. That's about as far as I will lend my mind to go. You know? Mm-hmm. That's it. Uh, but I'm glad you've entertained it. Makes yeah, me yeah. Uh, feel pretty safe and secure in our relationship when I'm sleeping next to you at night. So, well, I used to do that as a, you know, people do like fun, like, would you rather? Yeah, yeah. Would you rather get hit by a bus or see your parents having sex? Right. right. Which one would you rather, by the way? Uh, the bus. It, it, the yeah, bus, me too. Yeah. The bus yeah. for sure. Um, every time the bus. Yeah. And then I would just progressively go darker. And I think one of them was when I was when I would do this was like bite the head off of a chihuahua while it was still alive, like bite the face. Yep. Or something else really bad, right? Or have or a number four from up. Taco Bell. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, a number four that's been out in the sun or something yeah. for a couple of days. Which would you rather? Would you rather? Oh, here's a fun, when people want to do a fun little would you rather, that's what I throw in there. Yikes. Because I'm fun. Yeah. No, we're, we're going to get out of here now on that one. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day. This one's going out to uh, a uh, French author. I believe it's French. Yeah, it sounds French. Pierre Bouillet. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably pretty fluent in French, so probably is. Uh, he uh, wrote a little book, Science Fiction 1963, Planet of the Apes. Ooh. La Planète des Singes. 
I don't even know if that's that's not even close. Nah. Uh, later adapted into the uh, the movie, but man, so I'm just thinking back on this 1963 to now. Man, you're looking at 40, 60. Within 60 years, this is almost becoming true. Creepy. Yeah. It's creepy to me. Is Heston still alive? Charlton Heston? I don't, mm-hmm. I don't believe so. He's got to be. Uh, Kirk Douglas is. So. Sure, we know that one, but. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think Charlton Heston is still left. We have to see. Oh, yeah? You, you don't think we can get out of here on that? What? You have to know. All right. Right? Find out. Yeah, he's still alive. He is? Mm-hmm. You're, you're positive. No, he died. Oh, God. <laughs> he died the worst in 2008. Ever. This is, again, Alec, this is why we're going to have to have you start typing in things on a screen in front of us. <laughs> Otherwise, we will never, ever get a, the right answer out of every, 2008. That was 11 years ago he died. Yeah. Jabes? Yeah. Man. Man alive. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Just a computer. One computer for Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jables. We Jables. both have them in front of us. I am Ross Patterson. This is up. the revolution. Good night, everyone. Good night.